Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm on Washington Boulevard in the Ridgely's Delight neighborhood and behind me is Rachel's Dowry Bed and Breakfast, a fantastic historic place. We'll have to do a video just on that coming up. But it was built in the late 1700s, early 1800s by a gentleman named Michael Warner and Michael Warner owned a brickyard. He was one of Baltimore's early uh, brick makers and that's what we're going to talk, to, uh, talk about today today is Baltimore Bricks. Um, we'll circle back to this house uh, at the end of the video, but let's just start with a word about bricks. Bricks, of course, have been used by humans for millennia. Archaeologists have found 7,500-year-old bricks on the banks of the Tigris uh, River in ancient Syria and in ancient Jericho. In America, we started using bricks in the 1600s. There's some evidence that there was a brickyard in Virginia in 1610, and by the 1620s, we know for sure that Salem Massachusetts had a brick uh, making kiln. Some of our most beloved landmarks, historic landmarks, are of course brick. Think Independence Hall in Philadelphia, 1753. Before that, the State House in Boston, 1713. And before that, St. Luke's Church, the oldest church in Virginia in Smithfield, that some people think dates to 1632, but definitely was built by 1682. Um, so what about uh, Baltimore? Well, the great architecture critic of the middle 1900s, uh, Lewis Mumford uh, wrote, quote, the groundwork of Baltimore's architecture lies in the clay and stone that are on hand, meaning we're a city uh, made of local bricks, I think. We started building uh, with bricks, not in the 1600s, but by the late 1700s, early 1800s. Like St. Louis and Chicago, Baltimore brick makers got a boost from city codes that uh, forbid building in wood. They were fire codes. Um, they were a great boon to the brick makers. Um, I think they helped prevent fires, but not all of them. Think the 1904 fire here, which came 100 years after our uh, anti-wood ordinance uh, was adopted. Um, the, uh, the brick companies back then, we had loads of independent family-owned brick companies with names like Pritcher and Krager, Smith and Schwartz, Cromwell Brothers. They used various formulas and various techniques to make their bricks, but they were all using local Baltimore clay. We are blessed with uh, good clay here. Um, and that allowed them to flourish. By the late 1800s, the flourishing came in the form of consolidation, particularly by a company called the Baltimore Brick Company. It was founded in 1899 and consolidated 22 local uh, smaller brick companies. It bought up 1,200 acres of land in East Baltimore, and in its heyday, it was pumping out 150 million bricks a year, just a staggering amount. And some of those had wonderful names. Probably its signature brick was called the Homewood, or Homewoods, uh, if you will, uh, named, of course, after Homewood House, that wonderful brick house, of course, built by Charles Carroll of Carrollton, the signer of the Declaration of Independence, for his son. Still stands on the Hopkins Homewood campus today. Um, probably the chief rival of the Baltimore Brick Company was the Cushwa Brick Company. It got started in 1814, so very old, um, and had a long run. It closed down just a few years ago, but you can see its bricks all over the place, including in Camden Yards. You can see 750,000 Cushwa bricks there. Special formula made to uh, go in harmony with the Brick B&O Railroad Warehouse. Um, another place you can see them is Raven Stadium just around the corner using even more bricks 1.2 million bricks in Raven Stadium it was a pioneer the first football stadium to use uh, bricks in several decades and we were making so many bricks at the time that we were exporting them all up and down the East Coast. Uh, places like Manhattan College in New York made of Baltimore bricks. But our heyday started to wane after World War I, and we actually started to import bricks from rival places in Ohio and Pennsylvania. And then in 1968, when the Baltimore Brick Company closed its East Baltimore uh, works, that was pretty much the end of manufacturing bricks, uh, commercial manufacturing bricks uh, here in Baltimore. Um, but let me... Uh, start to wrap up by talking a word about the bricks that we see and don't see. Most of the bricks made in Baltimore were called common bricks, and those are the ones we don't see. They go into party walls or rear walls or interior walls covered by plaster. It's the face bricks that are the ones that we see are signature row houses. Um, they are made of finer clay and fired at higher temperatures, almost 2,000 degrees in some instances, made to be really durable to withstand the elements. Um, 
And so let's wrap up though by talking about uh, Michael Warner's house uh, behind me. If you take a look at it, it's got wonderful bricks and wonderful patterns. He was a brick maker after all. I think this was kind of like a, uh, a, a billboard for him. He wanted you to walk past his house and say, boy, Mr. Warner sure has good bricks. The next time I build a house, I'm gonna use uh, bricks from his company. Uh, and I think it probably worked. Now we are gonna have to leave the patterns to another video, Flemish Bond, Running Bond, Common Bond, English Bond. But I'll invite you to come on down, uh, take a walk past this house and look at the fantastic bricks um, and, and that show up all over Baltimore City. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.